Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bear Burrito Podcast. Episode Cinco de Mayo. That's five, for those of you who don't know Spanish. What's the de Mayo part? Oh, uh... Some people say Cinco de Mayo. Okay, well, it's a little known fact that... Actually, there's an entire story behind the the Cinco de Mayo holiday, Nick. I don't and, know. And, um, well, I'm going to tell you, all right? <laughs> and um, for those of you listening, this is 100% factual as well. So, this the Mexican colonies... Uh, back in the day, you know, back when you know, they were colonies, right, of Spain. Yeah. They they had no means of producing mayo in the colonies themselves, all right? And so they relied upon shipments from the motherland, you know, Spain, to get their need for, for mayo, for mayonnaise, right? Back then, which, if you didn't know, mayonnaise has existed for centuries, okay? And it was a, it was a commodity back then. It was a spice, you know? You know, they, they wanted that with their food. Um, now, on May 5th, it's remembered with sadness that a, a shipment of mayo was being transported across the Gulf, right, to a Spanish colony on the coast. And unfortunately, you know, as the sun rose on the 5th of May, it struck a reef and it started sinking. And so now all, all people in Mexico mourn the Cinco of the Mayo oh my gosh. On, on May 5th. And wow. which, for those of you who don't know Spanish, directly translates to the sinking of the mayonnaise. Jeez. Yeah. That's hardcore. That's how it happened, man. That's hardcore history. <laughs> that is, that's hard, <laughs> not copyright. That's, <laughs> that's hardcore history. Right there it is. Yeah, I never knew that. That's pretty wild. Now you know you've been educated. Wow. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. I think that was a good introduction into what we're talking about today. It totally which is, relates. Which is... Packing. Backpacking. When you go pack backpacking. Yes. Packpacking. Packing your backpack and backpacking related activities. It's today's yes. theme. Yes. Now bring mayonnaise. Yeah, we thought about this theme because we were trying to think of something to talk about. And uh, something that we realize is kind of fun and lighthearted to talk about is the type of stuff that you typically bring on a backpacking trip, the stuff that you shouldn't have brought, stuff that you should have brought that you didn't bring. Yes. All kinds of things that happen. Stuff that you end up coming back with that you didn't go out with. All kinds of stuff like that when you go backpacking. Just all the interesting things. Right. So I think that we should start at the beginning, which is the selection of your backpack. Yes. So that's going to vary on what kind of trip you're doing, right? If you're doing a multi-day trip, you're just going for a day hike, you know, things like that. So, you know, obviously something you want to consider is is the space in your pack. And for those of you who don't know or are, are new to backpacking backpacks are currently classified by liter and, and they're measured by how many liters they can hold right and so you know, you're going to choose the size of your backpack based on on what you want to bring how long your ship's going to be and how much it can possibly hold right uh so like right now i like to rock it, it depends on the day but like the pack that i'm using most for most of my trips is going to be between 50 and 60 liters right i don't know about you nick but that's that's mostly what I'm using, and that that's yeah. got me through. The I've actually done the 60 liter pack for for a two week trip before. Packed enough for two weeks, using that. It's doable. Yeah, it's doable. But yeah. they sell they sell bigger ones if you want that. Yeah, it definitely depends because there have been times where I've gone on day trips and like I'm just going on a day trip, but I've taken a bigger backpack uh-huh. because I would sometimes rather pack both for me and my wife in my backpack instead of sometimes carrying around a backpack that just like hangs on your shoulders a lot. Yeah. Because I've had some times where I, I, it's just a really light day, but the wearing on my shoulders sometimes, yeah. especially depending on how you're walking, where you're walking, what all you're doing, I would sometimes rather have a pack that just sits on my hips. Yeah. But be a little bit heavier and not really have to feel much. And you know, that goes into the next thing, which is like, when you've selected your backpack, how are you going to wear it? You yeah. know, because like if you're going to be carrying heavier gear or more gear and you, you have a bigger backpack, you know, you need to adjust the straps accordingly. So you need to be using those, this hip, that hip belt. And I know a lot of guys that actually refuse to use the hip belt. Yeah. Believe it or not. That's ridiculous. There is. I agree. I agree. But there is a cult. There is a culture of men. And it is, it's basically just men, not going to lie, <laughs> <laughs> who decide that the hip belt is not masculine. And so the whole weight goes on the sol- on wow. their shoulders. 
I can tell you guys right now, if you're listening, use the hip belt. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a world changer. It is. Yeah. I mean, I went on a backpacking trip with a guy who he couldn't use the hip belt because like the backpack was a little, the waist of it was a little too small uh-huh. and it wasn't able to sit well on him. And so he had to carry everything on his shoulders Ouch. the entire trip. Yeah. And he was very jealous of everyone else who had <laughs> the ability to put it on their hips. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going out for a day, I guess you could try and tough it out. And everything because I know sometimes like it can feel weird on your waist or yeah. it can sometimes or like rub, rub. It, can, it can chafe yeah yeah it can chafe a little bit but it's way better than just the stress and the pain yeah of it sitting on your back and your shoulders yeah definitely it's like there's so much that like goes into the comfort level of a pack and like how your straps are adjusted and how you've packed it and we'll get into that more later like how exactly you want to distribute the weight inside your bag but the hip belt I feel like for me is a must yeah. And like, you know, the chafing problem for the most part can be solved by using baby powder and also yeah. layering. Yeah. So like getting some padding in there with your clothing and then baby powder. That that has really helped a lot, you know, get some gold bond or something. That's really good. Um but yeah, make the hip belt, put it tight, you know, so that oh <laughs> so it'll be mostly on your hips instead of on your shoulders because then just the pulling down on your shoulders exhausts you. Not only is it uncomfortable, it also makes you tired quicker. You know, mm-hmm. you just exhaust you. So you want that. Um, and I think that we can't emphasize enough the importance of the load lifter straps. And if you don't know what a load lifter strap is, you can just Google that real quick. But it's basically uh, the strap up near your shoulder, the top of your shoulder, that pulls the pack closer to your back. Mm. So when you yeah. pull those straps in, the weight, you know, if it was, if there was like space between your upper back and the pack, it pulls it closer. And you want, you want the weight as close to the top of your back as possible. So you use the low lifter straps, get those nice and tight. If there's, if they're slacking them, then, then yeah. you're going to struggle. Yeah. The second thing that I look for in a bag is on the hip belts. Uh-huh. Is there a little pocket for M&Ms? Ooh, where I that's can, also a must. Or I can that's stuff also some must. M&Ms in there or something, <laughs> something nice. <laughs> The exterior pockets, yes, yeah. you need that. Because they're, you know, you can't always reach the the side pockets on the back, like on the side most of the, the time backpack. You can't at all, yeah. Yeah, most of like, the time you can't, or you have like stuff dangling off you because you can't do that. Yeah. And so if you can have just a nice little like little pouch on the waistband. Well, for Nick, the closest you can get to a fanny pack, yes. the better. The yes. closer you get to a fanny pack. If you're not wearing a fanny pack on top of a backpack, <laughs> which I would do. Nick is Nick is a fan of the man fanny pack and actually got me one for my birthday, which I actually appreciate because I've worn yeah. it, I've worn it hiking several times. Just yeah, the fanny pack, let's the manny di- pack. Yes, yeah. let's diverge a little bit here. Okay, and discuss how crucial a fanny pack can be on a hike because <laughs> you can sometimes leave the backpack yes. and take a fanny pack. My fanny you pack could. has multiple compartments. It's thicker. It's right. bigger. Right. It's not some trail running one. It's one that I'm packing out there, Rambo style, <laughs> in a way, around my waist. Right, right. Like, it's a good one. Right. No, no, I agree. Mine, like, the one you got me is, is excellent, too. It's very adjustable. There's a lot of pockets. It's bulky, which I really don't mind. I'd rather it be bulky. You yeah. Know? You can fit so many things in there. There's so many pockets. So many possibilities, Nick. Right. I like the color, too. It's tan. Yeah. All right. It's masculine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fine. If you, if you really care about that thing, which, you yeah. know, clearly, we don't really either, but Mine's it's tan. cool. Yeah, because yeah. I care. But it looks cool, you know? Yep. And I agree. I think that it's very, you know, it's practical. Snacks, mm-hmm. pocket for snacks, yeah. pocket for your phone, pocket yep. for your wallet, keys, yep. pocket for, uh, I don't know, whatever you're doing out there. Right. You know? Pepper spray. Pepper spray. Yeah. I don't know. Nail clippers. Yeah. Anything, man. Compass. You Compass. Know. Uh, you know, balloon animals. Yeah. Whatever. Just random balloons. Yeah. And you can pull the balloons out when you get tired. You see a fox. Some people take like, art paintings like their art canvas out there and they'll paint animals or they'll paint the trees yeah i sometimes like to take balloons with me out into the woods <laughs> wait for like a deer to walk around i'll get in the tree stand get inspired i'll get inspired i'll pull out a couple balloons and just start going to town on those balloons <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and just, make, yeah. i'll try and replicate that deer or whatever else comes across <laughs> That's... i usually go back and people are like oh do you see like a bunch of dogs yeah i'm like no these are deer so, I don't know. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just. getting better at it. <laughs> I tried to do a tree once. That right. worked out okay. It's a little harder to do the ocean. Right. If you see a snake, I bet that's the easiest to do. 
Yes. Juice. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Unless it's, um, yeah, depending on the type of snake it is. <laughs> if it's just eating a rat or something, you have uh, to kind of combine balloons okay. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like somehow get the balloon inside the other balloon. <laughs> And yeah, have it's gotta it be fatter in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that bulge. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's the more creative stuff. But yeah, if we encourage you to wear more fanny packs. Yeah. I'm a fan of the fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah. We work. Wear it in the back, wear it in the front. Yeah. We're on the hip on the side. If you wear it on exactly. the side, on the side. That's cool too. I was at work the other day. I used to wear fanny packs to work a lot until they kinda of got in the way to due to some of the work I was doing. And uh, some of the people left. Some of the people thought it was funny. Uh-huh. It reminded them of like their grandparents of course. and everything. But then my supervisor walks in the other day and he's like, everybody, I have this article that I want you all to look through. <laughs> it's called The the Pack is Back. And it was all about top 10 fanny packs to use outdoors and everything. And he passed it around. He said, Nick's the head of the curb. <laughs> 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 they laughed. Of course, of course. And I'm ahead. <laughs> and yeah, it's a popular thing. You go to a mall, you'll see mannequins with fanny packs on now. Now, Nick, do you what what style do you wear your fanny pack in? You you rock in the well, front, the back, the front. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it depends. Easy access, right? It, yeah. It certainly depends. If I'm hiking a lot, uh-huh. I'm probably gonna wrap it in the back. Uh-huh. That way, it doesn't get in the like the way of my legs as they bend. As right. I, especially if I'm going uphill. Right. Maybe if I'm going downhill, I might like let it hang in the front or something. Um, but yeah, it kind of depends on what you're doing. If I'm like rock climbing. And I keep it on me, which I probably wouldn't, because I'd have a chalk bag. But if I'm doing like a like fanny multi- pack could be the chalk. But bag. if I'm doing like a multi pitch climb, yeah, I'd probably have both on me, you know. Yeah. And I'd probably keep it in the back still. That way, it doesn't get in the way of stuff. And I can right. have some candy bars in there, right? And everything. Um, and it also depends uh, if I have a lightweight fanny pack, which I have. It's very mm. like a, like nylon or whatever. It's very breathable and whatnot. I could throw some candy bars in there. I could throw some light stuff in there. Right. Take it with me. But that big, like, bulky one that I have, like, that one's going to be more for, like, hiking, long endurance stuff. Right. It's not, I'm not going to take it canoeing with me, probably. Right. Because it'll get soaked and weigh a lot, whereas my other one, it'll get wet, but then dry up quickly. There you go. So it all depends. You have a ta- have a tactical fanny pack for every occasion. Exactly. Yeah. I am going to be saving up money for more. Course. Whenever uh, I buy equipment for outdoor business, yeah. I'm gonna invest in fanny packs. Yeah, I'm gonna maybe go with Black Diamond, see if they want to <laughs> <laughs> invest in a bunch of fanny packs with our name on it. Right, right, right. <laughs> fanny pack business. It's, it's maybe, booming. It's maybe booming. Patagonia, since they're the leaders in environmentally friendly there wear. We there we apparel. go. We'll uh, we'll pitch them some fanny packs. Yes. Yeah. Maybe they create don't have our own. Already. Yeah. Well, that's good. So. um Back to real backpacks. Wow. I, uh, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, back. I said backpacks. backpack. Backpack. That qualifies as it goes around your shoulders. Oh, okay. It's on your back. Yes. Right? I didn't say real packs. Oh, okay. Backpacks. I said real backpacks. Okay. Right? Just checking. So, um, exterior pockets actually, joking aside, is actually a really big deal. They are. Um, not just for, you know, things that you're going to need, like map you know, compass, something in there that you're going to need quick access to that you can't. But also I'm talking about water bottle pouches too. Um, because I know a lot of people, it's getting more and more popular to bring a water bladder and stick it in your bag. And I, I do that too, actually. I still do that. But that doesn't negate the fact that I also need water bottles. Right. Because I mean, they're easier to pour. They're easier to bring access out, you know, quick access to. And like with my water bladder, like my tube, you know, it, it wraps around where like I can drink out of the tube while I hike, which is mm-hmm. great. But... I, there's always going to be a situation where I need, I'm going to need a water bottle, especially mm-hmm. like, you know, if I need to fill up on the trail too, it's a lot easier for me to, you know, go to this, go upstream and fill my water bottle up than just fill my water bladder up. Sometimes yeah. it just technically it's harder to do that, you know, and I might need to actually fill the bladder up using the water bottles too. It's just always good to have a cup, right? Geegan. Yeah. All right. Side note. Why haven't, maybe this exists. I want to know if this exists. Sure. So you had the camelback. Yeah. And the straw, it's, it's like attached and almost to the camelback. Yeah. It like screws off, but it goes on there. Why haven't they done that to convert it with now jeans? Ooh. You I know? think, I, th- I actually think that, that camelback has a patent on really? the, uh, on the bite suction thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that they do on, on the bite suction straw. Uh, which is why you don't see that anywhere else except on the camelback. Interesting. Things. I think they do have a patent on Cause that. Because man, if they like 
created, like if they worked with Nalgene or just in some way were able yeah. to create a way where it could go, a straw dips into your Nalgene bottle uh-huh. and like suctions around the top of it <laughs> and you could drink out of it like that too. Right? That'd be so good. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. Anyways, but yeah, I agree. I think you need as many as possible. When Katie and I would go on hikes in Yosemite, uh-huh. we would take a ton of water bottles right. and our Camelbacks. We both right. had a Camelback and we had at least like two or three Nalgene's each. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I always carry two, if not three. Sometimes three. Yeah. yeah. If I'm carrying two, then I have my water bladder. Mm-hmm. If I don't, then I'm carrying more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's also useful to carry as much water as you can because you're going to find people on the hike that are not bringing water. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Like, we hiked up to a family of probably four, and they had one bottle of water. People are like, okay... Have you, have you met these people before? Because I'm sure you have. Like, you know, you went to college. Like, one of my roommates in college didn't drink water. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like he, he, yeah. he, his whole life, right. like, he didn't drink water. Yeah, I know people who strictly drink sweet tea, strictly drink yeah. just soda. How? I have no idea. Like, because I feel well, I humans, used, we need it. Yeah, I <laughs> used to do that, and yeah. then I got kidney stones. <laughs> Seriously? So, yeah. Yo, so you were one of these people. When I was right. 18, Tell I got us. kidney stones. Jesus. And whatnot. So I would drink tons of sweet tea all the time. Like I grew up in Southern Illinois. Yeah. And to people in the South, Illinois is in the North or in the Central. But if you go to Illinois and Southern Illinois, it's like the most Southern place ever. Really? Yeah. It's super Southern. And you go there, super sugary sweet tea uh-huh. and everything, all kinds of stuff like that. Everyone's drinking Mountain Dew out of Big Gulps and everything. <laughs> Like, it's just insane how big much gulps, sugar... Huh? Yeah, big gulps. It's insane how much sugar is passing through that place and how many bad things is soaking through that place and not water, you know? I think people are actually afraid to drink water sometimes there because they regularly have, like, those, like, boiling alerts okay. where you have to, like, boil your water all the time. Yeah. Consistently happens there. I've constantly seen my brother and well, mom, like, that's more excusable, that. I feel like, if the water's unsafe to drink. I don't think it is unsafe I, a lot I of doubt times. it is either, but... But... People can get a Brita. People can get like, yeah. you know, these filtration things that you yeah. can just update every once in a while. But I mean, anyways, I drink water out of the tap all the time. Me and, too. Yeah. I don't care about it. Um, but anyways, it's like, yeah, we just never drink a lot of water growing up except like in the summertime, yeah. which even then it was like drinking tons of soda, drinking tons of everything else. So I don't know. That's just how it was. It's and a culture thing, huh? Yeah, it was very much a culture thing. I think that you get away with it a lot as a kid. Yeah. And then as you grow older, you start to like your body just starts to decay. Yeah. You get diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Or something like all that stuff starts to happen. And you start to realize like, oh, it actually, I wasn't like some people think, oh no, like I can just drink sweet tea all the time. Yeah. Because I don't get kidney stones like Nick did, you know, but yeah. no, like you're going to hit like your 60s and you're going to have diabetes yeah, or something or you're going to have something going on with your health. And you're going to be like, oh, I couldn't have done this all along. Like yeah. this caught up with me. Well, that's the thing. Like, I feel like the people that do that, you know, don't have the best health. You know, like I, this roommate that I had, he drank, he drank strictly Diet Coke. Mm. Right. He had like he would go through like, you know, like a 12 pack of Diet Cokes like in two days. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's an insane amount of Coke. That's a lot. of Coke. Yeah. It's like a dangerous amount. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, yeah, it does. That will do kidney damage. Dude. Yeah. I know another guy who drinks coke all the time yeah yeah and see that like drink water (laughs) yes i've actually developed because as of now i pretty much only drink coffee and water same that's like pretty much and i drink black coffee like i'll go to starbucks and get like iced coffees or whatever from there yeah like with stuff in it yeah but i i get up every morning i have a pot of coffee going um i fill myself up my yeti with coffee in it Mm -hmm. and I'll drink that throughout the whole day essentially while I'm at work and then at some point my mouth will start to feel dry (laughs) because I'm working a bunch and I'm like starting to drink that and it's like oh my body doesn't want this right now and so I'll pour it out and I'll go to the fountain I'll get water and I'll be drinking out of that all day and it stays I have to have my water like cold like pretty cold and that's the best way to drink it for me but yeah like I just switch from that off and on and then you know coffee doesn't actually get me really hyper uh-huh. If anything, water actually makes me hyper. Well, there's actually science behind that. They say that like uh, a cold glass of water first yeah. thing in the morning, right when you wake up, oh, yeah. will make you feel very awake. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't even need to eat breakfast. You mm-hmm. just need to drink some water in the morning yeah. and it'll get you going. But So I'll switch off 
back and forth between that throughout the day. We have like Izzy's. Those are a little oh, more sugary. Yeah, yeah, those are good for you, but they're a little more sugary. Yeah. Um, pretty sugary, but I'll drink those like for dinner or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much what I do. But yeah, I try and drink as much water. Yeah, I, I drink only water and coffee too. And, you know, I think it's very, I guess it's important to carry a water bottle around just in everyday life because yeah. you forget to drink water and you don't realize you're yeah. thirsty either. It's the thing is like a All lot right. of people, like me, me included, like I don't even know when I'm thirsty a lot of the time. It's like your body will need water, but you don't feel thirsty yeah. right away because you're busy doing stuff. And you're distracted doing things. And honestly, a lot of times, too, we mistake hunger for thirst. That's yes. actually a lot of things. That's Especially actually at nighttime. Too. Yeah. Where you think that, oh, I'm, I'm hungry. I need a snack right now. But actually, like if you just drink a glass of water, you're like, mm. oh, that's what I need. Yeah. You know? And also, if you if you get frequent headaches, like my wife, she gets headaches all the time. And a lot of times it's actually because she's dehydrated. Yeah. And uh, dehydration causes headaches and she needs to drink something. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. I've I've just recently made it a habit of myself to only drink coffee when I'm sitting down. Yeah. If I take a break in the mornings, I'll have a cup of coffee. Um, whenever I take a break at work, like we have like 15 minute breaks and I'm usually in like the cafeteria because I clean there. Um, I'll sit down and have a cup of coffee and it's like a small cup of coffee, you know, and then the rest of the time that I'm around working, I'm drinking water. Yeah. You know, and I make sure that that's a thing that I do now. Like at nighttime, if I'm working on homework or something, I'll have me a cup of coffee or something. So I might have like three cups of coffee or four four cups of coffee throughout the day. Yeah. But I'm doing it in like small sections and only a cup. Uh And then I'm drinking a bunch of water throughout that as well. And I find that that's helping me out so far. That's a cool rule. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people have told me like to stop your cravings, you drink coffee. Hmm. But every time that I usually sit down to drink coffee, I'm usually eating something hmm. at the same time. So anytime I'm like drinking coffee, I'm just like, I need something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> like I need something to go uh, with this. That backfired. Yeah, it backfires <laughs> for sure. But uh, but yeah, I think that water is a great thing for the trail, for everyday life in general. Well, you need it to survive. So yes, you should drink it. Hydrate or die. Right? Hydrate or die. Hydrate or die. Exactly. So take take more water than you think you need yes even on a day hike now things that we should pack i think some people whenever they go on a backpacking trip they'll find themselves on pinterest on google on tons of articles talking about the best things to pack when going out on a hike in terms of food in terms of snacks in terms of meals all this types of stuff do you have any like go-to snacks or just foods or anything that you take with you yeah i mean there's you know there's a bunch of go-to snacks but also it depends on the trip Cause like there is, you know, there's a scale. Yeah. So it's like, are the better the food tends to be the heavier the food. Yeah. Right. So you have, exactly. you have to decide what you want to do. Like, yeah, if you want to have better food on the trail, well, hopefully your trip is shorter yeah. and you can afford to carry, you know, the heavier mm-hmm. food. Right. If your trip's going to be longer and more arduous, well, you're going to have, you know, maybe less tasty food, mm-hmm. more bulk foods. But lighter foods, you know, and, and things that are really high in caloric value, you know, because you need, right. you need, you're going to be burning calories all the time. Mm-hmm. For me, though, like no matter what trip I'm going on, I'm always bringing the tortillas and peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always bringing the tortillas and peanut butter. And I know that that sounds disgusting to some of you guys out there. Wow. But you put honey on it? Of course, bring it. Yeah, yeah, honey on it too. Yeah, I, yeah. That was like an entire meal that we had one day oh, dude, yeah. for like lunch was yeah. tortilla, peanut butter, and honey. Yeah. I mean, tortillas, you know, you're going to get your grains in and they're not going to get squished like bread would, you know, mm-hmm. super light, peanut butter, great source of protein, you know, yeah. calories, honey, get that energy, quick burning energy, those sugars, yeah. you know, you need that. Just, that's just a great meal, man. And then just start just doing shots snack. of honey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's a staple, dude. Always bring the tortillas, the peanut butter and the honey. It's good stuff. And, um, the cliche, cause I mean, that's, that can be a meal. You know, yeah. a sit down meal, but you're gonna also need snacks in between meals, uh, and the cliche create your own trail mix, right? Um, so I have I have a trail mix called Keegan's Victory Mix <laughs> that I make every trip I go on, and every trip I lead, I'll make it and label it in bags Keegan's Victory Mix, and everybody always wants it. So I'm not gonna tell the oh. ingredients here because I feel like it's special. Yeah, but it's very simple. And when you, if I told you, you'd be like, "That's it," and I'd be like, "Yep," <laughs> but everyone loves it. Right. And uh, find my suggestion for you is find find your own little make it fun, right? Yeah. Because you know, going grocery shopping is not always the most fun, but make it fun. 
create a recipe of what you want in trail mix. Don't just go buy a bag of trail mix. Make yeah. your own trail mix because one, it's probably going to end up being cheaper. You're going to have a lot more left over. You can be able to share with everybody in your, you know, in your group that you're going hiking with, and you you get to put what you want in there. Mm-hmm. Like, don't go out and buy like six bags of M and M's though, guys. Like M and M's go a long way. All right, you you need way less bags of M and M's than you think you do. Like, M and M's go a long way. All right, you can throw those in your trail mix. What? You can throw those in your trail mix. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, I like to do. I like to pack any snacks that I can put in baggies. Yeah. You know, in like small baggies. Sometimes I like. Uh, I like. I like things the size of M and M's. Yeah. But that are healthier. Yeah. You know whether they're like clusters of like nuts or whatever else like that. Yeah. Any like berries. Things like that, even like a graham cra- like those uh, crackers with the peanut butter in them, mm-hmm. and everything. I'll like throw some of those in baggies and take those with me too. Um, yeah, stuff that I can like crunch on, stuff that I can chew on a little bit more. Yeah, stuff that will help my brain realize because it's more for me a brain thing. Because I could go a long time, right? Without really having to eat something if I'm dedicated. Yeah, but yeah, just let my brain know like, hey, you're eating something. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're gonna feel better and think clearer if you're. If you have all those calories coming in, you know, is while you're hiking. So yeah, jerky, jerky, jerky is really good. Um, if you if you're you know really serious about getting into backpacking, investing in a food dehydrator is a must. Like I mm, have one, yeah, and uh, it's really good. You know, we'll we'll slice, we'll get some apple slices decently thin and sprinkle them with cinnamon. You know, while they're still wet, yeah, and then dehydrate them. Now you got cinnamon apple slices. You can put in baggies, take up no space. They weigh nothing. Yeah, you know, it's a great snack on the trail. Uh, you know, dehydrating, you know, making jerky. Mm-hmm. That's great too. But uh, we also, homemade fruit leather is something you can do. So what you do is you get, you know, everything for fruit smoothie, your favorite fruit smoothie, you know, be it bananas, you know, blueberries, you know, strawberries, whatever you want. Blend it all up, make the smoothie, and then pour it out on wax paper, spread it real thin, and put it in the food dehydrator. And then you can just cut it in the strips and you have fruit leather. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's really good. And you experiment with it, like you know, don't don't let your first time doing it be <laughs> right. right before you go on a trip. Right. <laughs> you know, like right. experiment with it, find out you know the ratio that you want, the thickness that you want, because you know you can make it. It can be gross if you do it wrong. Yeah. You know, so you you want you want to find the thing that works. But when you find it, it's delicious. Oh man, it's good. You know, it's like that's a side right there for a, for a meal. Yeah, you know, you eat some fruit leather and sandwich or whatever you want. But yeah, that's good. Um, Rice, take a lot of rice, um, because it's something you can cook pretty easy on the trail. Like when you have an established campsite, you know it's good. And rice is great, and good Just energy. Some, like pots and pans with you or something. Yeah, I always bring, I always bring a, a pot set with me, no matter where. You know, I always bring a pot set, and you know, like the little Russian nesting dolls, pot within a pot within a pot. You yeah, know? And that's yeah. what you got to do. And uh, yeah, so not only so that you can cook, but also you need to be able to boil water. You know, if you're out on a multi day trip and you're running out of water, and you and you've you find a fishy, you know, a, mm. a, you know, a source you might be a little skeptical of. Yeah. You want to play it safe because there's nothing worse than getting food poisoning on the trail. Oh yeah. So you know, if you're skeptical, no bueno. Might as well boil it. You're skeptical and you have the time. You might as well boil it, right? But um, there's some sources that are safe to drink straight from. I mean, like I've drank straight from the tap a few times. Like if it's coming out of a crack in a rock, you know, and it's yeah. raining down on my head. Like I've been under a few overhangs where it's a natural spring just coming right out of here. Just drink it right there. Do you there. bring like bleach and stuff with you? I, I up in there? <laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah. If you, I've done it. I just take a shot of bleach before I drink, <laughs> before I drink the water, yeah. you know, and that way it just makes my stomach. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think we brought like bleach and like peroxide or something like that. Yeah. You like put a few drips of bleach in there. And then you put a few drips at the, I forget, I think it's Brock, it's something like that. But you put a few drips of both in there and then you have to like shake it up and whatnot. And you can do just the bleach, I'm pretty sure, and shake it up. <laughs> and after a while, it's good. Like you have to let it sit for a while. I've, uh, I've done, I do, wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I just want to say the way we did it, yeah. it was totally safe. It totally tastes like bleach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after a week, you yeah. get an acquired taste for it. We did uh, we did iodine. We did iodine before. And uh, iodine water is nasty. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, they, they think they make sets now. Like, if you go to an outdoor store, I think they make sets now where, you know, they have the iodine tablets you put in the water. And then they have, like, 
taste tablets that you also put in the water and yeah. try it t- supposedly takes the iodine taste out uh, and i think it does for the most part you yeah. know i've had it, i've done it before but you still taste a little bit i mean like i'm one that like i'm not really picky right so like you know i need water to survive so i don't care if it tastes a little sour I'm gonna drink it you know so then why are you giving me that look about bleach <laughs> because bleach can kill you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Makes sense. laughs> But I mean, like, hey, you're alive. You're still here with us, so yeah, I yeah. did all right. Yeah, you have to teach me your bleach technique. Yeah, I'll have to contact them about it and see what yeah. all they did. Yeah, no, we we use iodine, and then uh, there's a few specific like brands that purify for you that taste pretty good. I think Aquavera or something like that. Huh. I don't know, something something similar. Interesting. That well, purifies the water. Well, shoot, nowadays they have straws. They, I have one. You can just dip your yeah. straw into the it's water. It's a life straw. It's yeah, a life straw. It's like got filtration in it. I don't know how like reliable that is for like bacteria. I feel like but it would only be good for like a few uses or something. Uh, well, it's supposedly there's like a thousand uses. Really? Yeah, or something like that. Like it says it says on the thing how many uses. I mean, I'd go for it. Yeah. And use it a thousand times, and if yeah. you like get really <laughs> sick, then at least you can sue them. Field test it. Yeah. yeah. Field test. So, I mean, I don't know. Somebody got me one for Christmas. I haven't used it yet, but yeah, well, let's do it. I'd be interested. We should we should test we should it. Just go out. Let's go make a video. Yeah, we should just go out the other day. and just get some day. dank, disgusting water. <laughs> Gross. And just I'll awesome. drink it. I'll do it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, the only thing Test is the, life straw. the only thing is I'd want to find a way to be able to like run it through the straw that way you could see what it looks like coming out the other end. I wonder if we put other liquids in it, what it would do. Like, what if I drank orange juice to it? Would it just like just taste like orange juice still, or would it like filter something it would, out? I think, <laughs> it would, I think it would jack up the straw. Oh, you think so? I think so. Maybe we should buy a couple straws and, and test them. And I see feel it. like they're probably too expensive to do that. I don't know. We don't have the money for that. Yeah, not yet. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but if we do this enough times, maybe people like donate some money to us to do yeah, it. To do um, like a dumb experiment, like testing a live stream. Yeah, we would get to the point where companies would send us their stuff to test them out. I guess that's true. I mean, I, I want to test the live stream. I think we should do that. Yeah. Let's make a video. Move let's, good. let's get some like some questionable water yeah let's like when we can make our own homemade like Dirty mix the water, water with something disgusting like, like make it real gross like i'll drink it i don't care i like put my foot in it yeah like you know dunk yeah dunk your body parts in it like, okay don't do that <laughs> <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> or now have a water where i don't know what's in it oh that's true have a mystery one and, okay. and i'll drink it and okay yeah we'll, we'll see, see what it tastes like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm down for that yeah okay Cool. And, uh, we'll, we'll get people vote on things to put in it. Yeah, so you know, comment on what you want in the dirty water that Keegan's going to drink through his life straw. I wonder, you're allergic to cats. I wonder if I put cat hair in the water. That's a great idea. If you would die. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's really test the life straw. Yeah. Okay, like, maybe. I, guys, I'm like super allergic to cats. Like I like cough and and all that stuff and like i get sick like i'll get bronchitis if i like am around cast too long so yeah maybe yeah. we won't try that one but okay yeah i do it okay well, maybe <laughs> <laughs> do so, it for the podcast so yeah i mean but yeah yeah bring some bring pots and pans <laughs> around <laughs> around about way <laughs> if you're going on a multi-day trip you need to you need to bring cookware but, yeah cookware is yeah. definitely good what do you think about bringing eggs, boiled eggs? Uh, yeah, hard boiled eggs. Yeah, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Quick shot of protein. You know, it's good. Not a bad idea. Um, Bagels. We've we've powdered eggs before. You've gotten powdered eggs and, and bring them out on the trail. Or um, another thing, and this is only it only lasts a couple of days, but if you uh, crack a bunch of eggs and scramble them all in a bowl, you know, so it's just like a big thing of egg yolk, and then mm. just pour it all in a bag oh, and take wow. it out with you. I've done that before. And, you know, and that'll last you like two or three days, you know, yeah. before it goes bad. But, you know, you have like, yeah. maybe not three days, but, <laughs> but it lasts you a couple days. Well, practice. I guess you could have, I've never done this, but you could have one person with a pack that's like a cooler pack. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just have them hold all the cooler stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, you can get some, you know, some insulated sleeves and stuff yeah. like that. And I think that could be interesting. Keep things idea. cold as long as possible. Uh, that's it. That is gonna weigh you down a bit more. You could have like pizza rolls in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just yeah, get a frozen pizza, a whole frozen pizza. Yeah, it's like cook it on the trail somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just leave it in the sun <laughs> until it melts. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> 
Yeah, I always like to bring a Snickers with me. I always like to have like a guilty pleasure. Oh yeah, like un- Got to. like healthy unhealthy thing for you. Yeah, because you know a Snickers bar can be great. You know, like it's like we said, it can be one of those things that's really quick to give you like really quick sugar, really quick. Yeah. Um, all that jazz. Like sometimes athletes will drink sodas like mm-hmm. right after an intense workout. Yeah. And everything just for that reason. Um, it's not the healthiest thing to do, but yeah, well, there's, there's something to that. And I don't know, you know, like nutrition is something where they're always coming up with new theories on what's good for you and what's bad for you every year. Right. Yeah. But there was, you know, for a long time, there was a theory that, um, like if you, if you are in pretty good shape, like, you know, an athlete and stuff, or like you're very active, having some sugar, like gets your metabolism burning. Like it's, they, it, you know, you start mm. burning the sugars real quick. And if you had had, you know, like a lot of protein before or a lot of complex carbs before, well, you know, it's like, it's like tinder for the fire, Mm. right? The sugar starts burning and now it's easier for your body to start burning those other, those other things and, and, you know, makes it easier. At least that's what, and uh, that's part of what the army thinks. Cause I mean, if you look like, okay, so anybody, if you haven't heard the army uses things called MREs meals ready to eat right and they're kind of universally hated among soldiers there's some that are good and some that are bad right and uh you can buy them from military surplus stores you want to try one you know it's basically food in a bag yeah and uh it's all non-perishable stuff some of them are good i think but a lot of the bags like a lot of the MREs are sugar based a lot of them you just have a ton of sugar in them like there's a lot of like every each one comes with dessert but each one also a lot of them come with these (laughs) with these nutrition bars Right, they they literally says it. it says like this is a nutrition bar, right? Huh. But it's like all sugar. Huh. There's like twenty grams of sugar in each Jeez. one. Yeah, so I don't know. Military doesn't maybe I don't know. Sugar on the trail is not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I definitely don't think sugar on the trail is a bad idea. Yeah, a lot of times it's just like what kind of sugar it is. Yeah, you know what it's coming from, how much you're ingesting, when you're ingesting it. Yeah, are you using an IV? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> those questions to ask yourself. <laughs> right. And whatnot. Sometimes instead of a Camelback, yeah. I just have an IV hooked up to my system. <laughs> you, just, you wheel around, you, you wheel around the little pole with the wheels and the That's oh, just sitting bag in my hanging. bag. <laughs> oh, okay. Just right. a whole set in my bag. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, those are a lot of great things that you can take on a hike with you. There sure. are a lot of great things um, to take on a hike. Question. Sure. If you're doing an overnight stay, uh-huh. what kind of uh, camping gear are you bringing? Uh, okay, well, it also depends on the time of year and the place you're going, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people, like, what's popular now is a lot of people like to just, you know, hammock camp, where yeah. they just bring, they're just bringing their hammock, you know, like their Eno or whatever. Like, I have one, it's not an Eno, but I have one that has, like, a mosquito net. Mm, I'd highly nice. recommend that, man. That's like, awesome. Like, getting your hammock and being able to, you zip yourself in, with, like, mosquito net over top of you. It's really nice, keeps the bugs out. Um, I don't like hammock camping, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because... It's it's cold. I sleep cold, mm. and you have all your heat's escaping through the bottom. Right. You know, so some people like they'll take like their their sleeping pad and they'll put it in their hammock to try and get a little more insulation. Yeah, it really doesn't work well. Yeah, it's it's just hard. Because essentially, what you need is they people make their own things that go on the outside. Yeah, you of the hammock too. to like block the wind and cold and everything to insulate it from yeah. underneath it. But for me, like I just I lot. sleep so much better on the ground. You know, yeah. like sleeping pad, like always, if you're new to backpacking, you need, you need to invest in a sleeping pad, either inflatable. I, I'd recommend one that you blow up. You know, there's, they also have like the Therma Rest ones are really good. Those aren't, those are semi-inflatable, I think, actually. I think they're padded, but they're also inflatable. Mm-hmm. But um, when you're sleeping on the ground, you'll lose all your heat into the ground. So you need something that separates you from the ground. Yeah. So you need a sleeping pad to retain heat and keep warm at night. Um, so invest in a sleeping pad, one that's good. And uh, a patch kit for it too. If you get an inflatable one, I have a patch yeah. kit. And I, mine's already busted like twice. I patched it up twice. You know, it's fun. Yeah. But um, and if you can't tell, because there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing worse than having like a teeny tiny hole, and so you don't know that there's a hole, and oh. you've blown up your sleeping pad. Yeah. But then you wake up at you know three a.m. and you're yeah, on the and ground you're on and you're ground. freezing. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, what happened? And now you have to get out of your sleeping bag and you have to blow it all back up again. And some, you know. So if you if you're not sure, what you can do is fill up the bathtub with mm. water, and then That's... blow up your sleeping pad and stick it in the bath. And if there's bubbles coming up, you can yeah. tell where the leaks from. That's smart. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I've typically gone on the ground as well. Haven't done a lot of like in hammock camping. 
mainly because I just don't think I've, my body has gotten used to it. Yeah. To sleeping in, in that style. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like quite a tosser and turner, but yeah, I tend to move around a lot. But I don't too. know. I also just like the idea of kind of being on the ground, being able to just like, I don't know, move around or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, now here's another question that I learned on yeah. my first backpacking trip was what you wear inside the sleeping bag. Yeah, so especially if it's cold outside. This is a debate. Like, yeah, if it's like day, if yeah. it's like January, right, and it's like ten degrees outside, right. What are you wearing inside the sleeping bag? Okay, so your your instinct tells you to bundle up. Yeah. Right now, I've heard. I'm not gonna. I've heard that and if I you sleep verify. naked, I if can, you sleep naked yeah. in the in there, you actually sleep warmer because your body heat. You do. It's able to spread more. Is that true? It's true. I verified it. Really? Yeah. My first backpacking trip, we were, uh, it was a canoe day, I believe. Yeah. Or no, it was after canoeing. And uh, those were some of the coldest nights as well. Yeah. But all of a sudden, I see one of the dudes in like our little like row of guys. Right. Just stripping down. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, you are insane. Right. You know? Because in my thought, I'm just like, yeah, like, I want to bundle up as much as possible. It's right. so cold outside. We're like 20 feet away from the fire yeah, and everything. And uh, I spent that night really cold. But then the next night, I stripped down, got inside that, like immersed myself in my back. Yeah. And I hardly, I don't even think I woke up that night. Really? Because I was so warm. Yeah, I've yeah. never done it. Now, so. it's horrible when you have to like get out. <laughs> And go use the bathroom or right. something. I would also recommend, I don't know, some people will like to keep their clothes like down at the bottom by their feet yeah, to like I, warm them up or something yeah. like that too. Like you can do that as well. Right. It's just making sure that they're not like in contact with your skin all the time yeah. to like absorb the heat from you. Well, actually, if you have a sleeping bag liner that you put inside your sleeping bag, what you can do is put the clothes in between yeah. the liner and the sleeping bag so it's not touching you, but they still stay warm. Yeah. That's... That's what I've done sometimes. And that's essentially what we had too. Like yeah. We had liners that we would do that with. Yeah. So like if it's super cold and you don't want to buy a whole cold weather sleeping bag, like you just have your summer one. Yeah. And invest in getting a sleeping bag liner. Yeah. Yeah. That That's good too. And you also will sleep much better without all those clothes on too. You I know? believe that. Like yeah. you're going to feel, at first you're going to be like weirded out by it, but eventually like your body heat's going to like... Mm-hmm. You're going to start producing more heat. You're going right. to start feeling more heat. And then you're just going to sleep really well and comfortably. And you're going to wake up the next morning feeling yeah, good. I, I mean, I, I believe that because, like, you know, insulation is all about creating those those pockets of dead air. Yeah. You know, the, in, the air that's not moving. And so your body heat heats up the immobile air and that keeps you warm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I get that. You know? Yeah. But um, what did you do for your face? Like, did you just put your whole head in the sleeping bag too, or? There were a lot of times where I did that, but surprisingly, I uh, would keep my head outside the sleeping bag to regulate the heat. You got too hot. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, man. (laughs) I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't say I got too hot. Yeah. But if I stuck my head inside the bag. Then you would get too hot. Then my fate, my head would feel hot. Yeah. Because, you know, I think we can all experience moments where, like, if you're in a hot tub, your body feels fine. Right. But you go immersing your head in it a lot of times. Your head sometimes can't stand the heat as much yeah. as the rest of your body can. Yeah. And it's kind of the same way with the sleeping bag is if you put your head under there, it's going to feel hotter to your head. And so you kind of just leave it out. Um, but yeah. But there would be sometimes like if the wind was blowing, I'd stick my head inside. Yeah. But usually our, our tent was pretty like we didn't have a tent. We had a tarp. But usually we set it up pretty well, well, where it blocked all the wind. Yeah. And our body heat kind of like would right. circulate throughout it. Right. That's another thing that you're going to have to consider when you're packing for that packing trip too is uh, do you want to bring a tent or do you want a tarp? You know? Oh, yeah. Because, um, you know, you can build an A-frame or a lean-to with just a tarp. You know, that's going to take up less space and be lighter. But, you know, you'll be less cozy or less yeah. secure. And, you know, I think some for some people, you know, me included, I think everyone, it's a psychological thing too. Like you feel more secure inside of a tent than you do just out or under a tarp or in a hammock, you know. And like you really shouldn't because it's like, you know, a millimeter of nylon. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. But it's for your mind. You yeah. Know? It makes you feel more secure and like you have a home, you right. know, and you feel more at peace because like this is 
this is my space. Yeah. You know, whereas if you have a, a tarp, you're more connected to nature and you're not, you're sharing the space right. with nature instead of having your own space. You know, so it's, it's up to you. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally prefer just a tarp. Yeah. Yeah. If I go camping with Katie, she's going to want a tent. Right. And that's fine. And I'll get like a minimalist tent. Yeah. And everything. But yeah, I really love tarps. Yeah. 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 I have a, they have both. So it depends. Like, I mean, I have a hammock too. So yeah. I've exactly. done all three, but I think I prefer the tent. No, honestly, I like having that little space of serenity you can make. Yeah. yeah. Some people don't even use anything. Yeah. I mean, one, we've done that too before. Like when we were out in Arizona, we just land on a sleeping pad under the stars. Yeah. On a rock. The rock was hot, you know, heat from the day. Yeah. It's actually really nice. Yeah, speaking of the dark, look how dark this room has gotten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. When did we start? We started at like, I don't know. See, I think we, let's see how long we've been going for. 45 minutes? Yeah, so we started at like 7.45, maybe. Yeah. yeah man. It got dark. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, so shelter, um... We've packing, covered, yeah. packing your bag. So, you know, you got your, you got food, um, water, shelter, cookware, you know, clothing. We might have a whole episode just talking about clothing because there's way too yeah, much to go into about that. But, you know, my mentor used to say there's no such thing as bad weather. It's like bad clothing, bad yeah. preparation. Yeah. Cotton kills. Oh, cotton. You heard that? Yeah. Heard that too. Cotton kills. Cotton cools in the summer. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about clothing some other time, but um, when you're packing your pack, like I said, the load lifters earlier about the load lifter straps is you want you want your your pack as close to your back as possible, particularly yeah. the top of your back. And um, what that means for packing your bag is that uh, you you might think that you want to put your heavier, bulkier stuff at the bottom so that it doesn't squish everything, but actually you want the reverse. You want to put your lighter, fluffier, squishier stuff at the bottom. Not food, of course. Like if your food's going to get ruined, don't put it at the bottom. But you want your lighter, squishier stuff, so like your sleeping bag, tarp, whatever, in the bottom. And you want your heavier, bulkier stuff towards the top because you want your heavier stuff at the, at the top of your back and not at the bottom where your waist is. It's going to exhaust you more and it's going to feel worse. And if you don't believe me, try it. You know, you know. You and think- I think you should try your, your bag on before you go hiking anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think that differs between men and women and how they carry their balance? Uh, possibly, but really, like, um, it, it, I think it's better for everyone is to have your heavier stuff yeah. towards the top and and near the top of your back. It's just easier for you to carry it because I know that women are going to carry weight more on their on their waist, but I think everybody should try to carry as much weight on their waist also. But it'll it'll feel better dispersed if it's gotcha. on the top of your pack and it's easier for you to control and handle and carry and you know test that like if you don't think that that's true test it because you'll see you'll feel the difference when you have it near the bottom or near the top and if you don't think you feel the difference you know three miles in you'll feel the difference you know? <laughs> yeah. it's it's better to have the heavier stuff near the top of your pack and then from another logistical standpoint it helps squish things down into your packs so you have more space yeah you know because you want to pack things and roll them tight and squish them down in there um there's there's a few theories on how to pack too and doing that squishing things so like uh when you're packing your clothes you know do you do you fold it or do you roll it i typically roll it yeah so you've seen some people that fold it at like the bottom and try and squish it down that way but yeah, no something works you gotta roll man yeah. Gotta roll. Yeah, I will roll and squish the crap out of my clothes. Yeah. A lot of times. You gotta roll. We can have like a maybe maybe make a video of how to range a roll or how to how to roll your your shirts and pants so that they are yeah. self contained units. You know, that's yeah. how you do it, man. You gotta roll it. Um what else? Jeez. I mean, I think that really covers a lot of it. I think after that, like those are a lot of the basics. After that, it all comes down to, again, just what kind of trip you're going on, you know, because you can be going on a really long trip and some people like have to bring the French press, you know, <laughs> it's true. and I would argue against that, you right. know, but some people want to, there's some trips where you're just like, oh, like I want to bring the Frisbees yeah. and then that's going to go into how you pack or how you do different things like that. Some trips you're going to need multiple pairs of shoes. Always bring rain gear, though. 
always bring rain gear. Always have like a uh, rain cover for your bag if you can. Yeah. Um, there's all the, just depending on the types of trips that you go on, there's so many different nuances and things that you can do for it. Yeah. You know, and if you have a question specifically, you know, let us know. We'll try and answer the best we can. But for rain gear, make sure that's in a pocket that's easily accessible, preferably an outside pocket. Yeah. Because you don't want to be digging and taking everything out of your pack as the rain pours down on you. Yeah. You and know? make sure it's all like sealed well. Yeah. You know, like make sure that the pants that you have for raining are pants that aren't going to have water seeping through it. Right. You know, make sure that and it's... weigh you down. Yeah. And sometimes those are going to be thicker. Sometimes they're not going to be as breathable. You know, your rain jacket kind of needs to be the same deal and whatnot. It should all like overlap with each other. And with rain jackets too, you got to be careful also because if it's a hot day, you can't overheat in those because rain jackets tend to retain heat really, really well. So you can, you know, potentially hurt yourself. You know, if you're, if you're hiking hard and you have rain gear on, you're going to be, you're going to be heating up. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. well. <clears throat> that's uh that's all we got for right now i mean obviously there's so much more yeah that we need <laughs> that we probably needed to talk about i think that's just but, i think that's just an, yeah you know we covered really well i think just the idea of packing itself yeah and i think eventually we might have a whole thing on food we might have a whole thing on clothing like we said whole yeah. thing on every like, types of shoes that you should wear all these different types of things right and, you know, this is just one aspect of outdoor recreation. Yeah. It's backpacking. I mean, like, there's so many more things to talk about, too. Canoeing, rock climbing, caving. It's like, there's there's so, so many things we could be talking about. It's like, we yeah. want to talk about backpacking. Well, we just hit some parts of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we want to talk about general. every part of it, we'd be here for hours. Yeah. I think what this can do for you all is yeah. not to be like, man, they didn't cover anything that I wanted to hear. Because what this <laughs> does is it gives you a general overview of packing in itself. And helps you realize, oh, well, I'm going to go backpacking this summer. I need to know about this. There's and a now, lot more I had to consider. Yeah, and now you can send us a message and say, hey, I want you guys to talk about this because you didn't cover this. And we will love to cover it. If you have a very specific question like, hey, I'm going to be hiking in the Smoky Mountains between this point and this point, And I need it in this time of the year. I need to know like what kind of stuff I should bring. Email us that. We'll probably do a nice Google search on it and figure it out for you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or use our wisdom and tell you um, any kind of specifics you have. What kind of stuff should I bring on a canoeing trip? All kinds of stuff. We yep. can tell you. Let us know, guys. And, you know, when we're doing general overview uh, podcasts like this, you know, I go, of course, we're not going to hit everything. So don't judge us too hard for that. We're just trying to have Stop fun. judging here. us. Yeah. Just trying to have fun here. Trying to talk about stuff we like to do. Yeah. And well, yeah. and another thing we talked about, this is closing the show. We've been talking about guests that we want to bring on. Right. We have a few guests that we're thinking about already that we haven't reached out to yet. But we'd gotten that one message from uh, Katie on Twitter who said that she wanted to know more about how to uh, build an outdoor business and what it's like to start it up and everything like that. That show is on the way. That show is on the way. We've got someone in mind that we might want to do that with if they can do it. And I think it'll be very informative for everybody. Yeah. But all right, guys. Uh, Website. Go check it out. It should be pretty cool. Bearburrito.wix.com dash home. You can go to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, <laughs> Burrito Podcast. Find us anywhere. Email us. Message us. All that jazz. Absolutely. Leave us five star reviews. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Oh, wait. For closing? Oh. For closing. Oh, okay. Okay. So normally when we close, we've been saying stay saucy, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, someone suggested to me that we say Bear Burrito, that's a wrap. Mm-hmm. What do you guys, what do you think? I mean. I think that's a wrap. That, ooh, all right. <laughs> all right. Bear burrito. That's a wrap. And stay saucy.